So uh, welcome to our informational meeting about uh, Warrant Article 1, which is the high school renovation. I'm Larry Russell. I'm Karen Burnell, Business Administrator. And I'm Steve Beals, Principal of Alvern High School. Thanks for watching at home, and thanks for the people who came out tonight. So we're going to start off with uh, some general uh, information about um, Article 1. The first thing is the actual uh, article itself. And I'm not going to read the article word for word, but uh, what it states is that um, we're going to have a, um, a renovation done at the high school. Uh, the price of it is to be not more than $23,989,957, and that'll be in bonds or notes. And uh, the first year, will, there will be an uh, additional sum of $644,730 for the first payment. Which, so that'll be in addition to the $23 uh, million. And we're going to go over the specifics about the, uh, what is going to be entailed in the, um, the high school renovation. Uh, we do need a 60% vote. And we do encourage people to come out and support this, because this is something that um, Hudson really needs. Uh, the ex estimated tax rate uh, impact would be 22 cents. And it was recommended by the Hudson School Board 5-0 and recommended by the Budget Committee 8-1. to uh, If you look at the, the, uh, the present setup of the high school, you can see why this re renovation is, is needed. Um, this is the um, stuck doors right here that, that go into, uh, into the uh, lobby, then go up into the gymnasium and right now, that's the main interest that everybody uses. And as you can see, um, there's uh, some parking over here, parking you know, right down here. And people just walk through those doors. Those, those are double doors, so that they, you have to get into two doors to get in. Um, but if you look into the, um, the entrance, this is where those, du those double doors lead into. So you walk right into uh, a vestibule right here, and there's security. Um, booth right there where uh, where people um, are seen coming in but once the people come in then they have pretty much uh, can go anywhere in the school that they you know they can choose to go there's there isn't a direction um, to go for either counseling to go for special education to see the administration or whatever their their business is in the school so right now they're coming into an area of the school that's far away from uh, every place that most visitors need to go to. Beyond that uh, vestibule, you walk right into what turns out really to be the, the largest hallway in the school, but it's actually the cafeteria. And so when people come and visit, um, we do, for the most part, have everyone escorted within the school for safety measures, but they walk right into the middle of um, uh, lunch if they come in at a certain time of the day and so uh, a visitor can come in and, and all the kids are right there uh, and this is something that um, we feel needs to be improved upon at the school uh, because right now um, the visitors to the school shouldn't be mixing in with the kids at the school so uh, if a person um, comes into CTE although there is a back entrance um, they some people do come into the um, this area right here and go back to CTE or they go over to uh, special education or they go over to counseling or the administrative offices. And this is a setup that's really not uh, best for kids. Uh, this is the parking lot and uh, our uh, brave principal stands uh, right over here every single day. And uh, it's kind of a <laughs> dangerous thing to, uh, to do every day. Uh, people are, are driving up, driving right by him. Uh, kids are walking down the, um, in between the cars over here. And it's, uh, it's not the ideal situation uh, for school safety. Uh, there is really not a established pattern, although people are used to, to driving in a certain direction. But you can go in either direction uh, if, you're, if you're driving into the school. And uh, this is something that isn't, um, isn't really well uh, done because, like I said, you can go in, into either direction. So this, is, uh, this can be uh, a little bit chaotic during the day. Uh, here's a picture of the, the current gymnasium. Um, this gym was built in 1975. Um, the floor right now is um, at its life. Uh, the 
uh, the process to um, take care of a gymnasium floor is to sand it down, put varnish on it, sand it down, put varnish on it over the years. And this floor is so thin right now that you cannot do that anymore to the floor. You'd be right down to the, the, the substrate underneath it. The, um, the wooden bleachers, I think there's one other school in the state with wooden bleachers right now. So this is one of two schools that have wooden bleachers in the state. And if the, in order to open up the bleachers, you have to have a, a device that grabs onto the bottom of the, the bleachers and pulls them out whereas they should be uh, just coming out with the push of a button. The same thing with the, the two baskets, or the, actually the six baskets. They go up and down using a hand drill or a drill, and uh, this is something that should just be on a button that you know the baskets go up and down. So um, right now, um, this gym is the... Uh, is, is besides being a gym, it's all also our audit auditorium also, so it's a gymatorium as it w as it were, and um, so this isn't ideal if you want to have a show, if you want to have a play uh, for the acoustics. Although we we do the best we can with it um, for um, either music performances, for plays, for um, cabaret, for all the different activities we have. And um, it's, a, it's a testament to the staff on the great job they do to make this work. But this is not the uh, ultimate setup for, um, for our students. So the priorities. The priorities with this uh, renovation, uh, number one is to have a safe and secure building entrance. And uh, I, I, I say this to people all the time that um, there are certain things that, uh, that, you know, that a superintendent has to worry about or or concentrate on, but I can tell you that the, the safe and security of all the students is my number one concern. And uh, this is something that literally does, you know, keep me up at night sometimes when you worry about things. And uh, uh, this is something that we can really improve upon if we had this renovation done. So that's the number one priority. Number two is uh, improved access and function of special education, counseling, and administration. And that would be, uh, I'll, I'll show you the pictures in a second. That, that would be greatly improved uh, with this renovation, and it really does go hand in hand with number one, the safe and secure building entrance. Uh, safe and secure drop-off sequence, and uh, we'll show you what that looks like too. That's something that is gonna improve the safety for the students, the safety for Mr. Beals and anyone else who works out there. Uh, enhanced co-curricular space for performing arts and PE athletics. Um, the uh, students um, in our district have, uh, should have the same opportunities as students in any other district to have an up, uh, up to date um, space for, for co curricular sports, for their athletics, and for um, performing arts. And the last one is improved community and recreation space. This is something that's not just being built for high school kids, this is being built for the whole community, and the whole community should take advantage of. Um, of using a, a great facility like this for, um, for their personal recreation or for any kind of opportunity they have to come out and see one of our shows. I know that uh, we, I just got an email the other day from a parent uh, talking about our, um, our uh, jazz band that you know, they, would, they just couldn't believe how good the jazz band was. And so you can you know, come to the school and see some great entertainment for free. And I think that the town should take advantage of that, but it should be in, in a uh, facility that lends itself to the uh, great programs that we have here. So this is talking about um, the Homeland um, Security recommendations that were done. So uh, we, we had a um, Homeland uh, crew come in here and look at all of our schools to say what can be done to improve the, s the safety for the schools. And at uh, Alvern High School, there are nine main uh, things that they said that we should be working on. The first one is to have a secure vestibule uh, or an entrance into um, the school. So we saw the picture of how the, the one is currently right now, where you walk into a, a vestibule, uh, and then you walk into a, a little um, hallway, and then you're right in the middle of the cafeteria. Uh, with, this, uh, the, with the renovation, you'd actually walk into a vestibule right here, and then you're going to go into one of two windows. You can go to this window over here for special education, or you can go over this one over here if you're going to go into the you know the main office, and you can be let into either side. So if you have a a meeting uh, with the counselors or a meeting with special education, you walk you walk in this entrance right here, 
and you, you talk to somebody, they let you in, and you go to the office, and you walk back out, and that's it. You're not intermixing with uh, kids, and you're not walking around the whole building. You're self-contained within this area, so you take care of your business, and then you, know, you leave afterwards. Um, security cameras, which is something that we've put in uh, over uh, two different stages. Uh, we, um, we've improved uh, our, our camera uh, coverage uh, quite a bit. And um, this will this will even lend itself to better um, be able to view people coming in. Uh, uh, ve uh, ve uh, vehicular uh, impediments. So we have these um, big stones out here, and um, some railing over here that prevent um, any kind of cars from crashing into the front doors. And uh, they also serve as seating for students for after school. So they have a place to either wait for a ride or sit with their friends either before or after school. So it looks really nice, uh, but it also serves um, to stop any kind of traffic from um, going into the building. Uh, we have sight lines because we have windows over here with the SRO and the principal that can now look over the parking lot and see what's going on out there to make sure all the kids are safe. Uh, the... Um, we have uh, securable public areas where people can, you know, uh, can uh, meet if they're, if they're coming at different times, like two people are coming at different times, families coming at different times, they can meet in here and wait in here or wait in this area. And uh, it's secure. It's not good. They're not going to be in the main building. Um, I guess those are the, the major features of, of the, uh, the new improved area. Oh, go ahead. Uh, your, uh, your secure area, I'm assuming you're going to have lockdown buttons also. The lockdown buttons? The, uh, um, yeah, in case there's an intruder, uh, you are, someone in reception can hit the button. Right, we it do. takes the doors out of program. Exactly. We have a couple of uh, different things that do that. We have, a, we, we have a panic button that's in place. And so, right, exactly. And so that, um, that can be done from a couple of different areas, and that does shut everything down, and it, it notifies the police right away to come right down. Um, but we can also uh, do that uh, remotely too. So as the superintendent, I have a, an app on my phone that I can actually shut down the school, shut down all the doors in any building or all buildings in the district. And so we have that capability and all of that. And it has good access control too for, um, uh, for, for staff coming in. They all have, we all have a, a badge um, that we have to pass, um, pass a, a reader so that when we come into the building, they know that some that some that you know that we're somebody that should be there. Um, yeah. So this. Yeah. Th then we have Karen talk about uh, the next slide. Okay. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the finance piece. Um, I'm going to start by just saying you've heard the saying, "Kicking the can down the road." Uh, last year we did have this article before the voters. It was estimated at 22 million. This year, the estimate is $24 million. We're looking at a 7.4% um, escalation due to construction material and labor. This article does include two things that were not included last year. That would be the stadium field renovation and the tennis court renovation. Sorry. Go ahead. And can I ask why those two were added? Where they weren't added in years past? We talked about whether or not. Um, why wouldn't they be standalone? Because I know you did the track not too long ago. As standalone. And I think uh, the track goes around the stadium field, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that have been included at that time or wasn't it discovered until afterwards? It wasn't included last year. This year, when we, we are moving other pieces, which meant that those pieces had to be done. And I think we looked at whether or not to include an additional warrant article, and we didn't want to have. So many articles on the ballot. Thank you. Tax impact. As you are aware, we would be um, looking at borrowing approximately $24 million for, for 30 years. You can see that the first year of the payments would be approximately $66 as um, tax impact. That would be because there is only a interest payment on the first year, similar to your mortgage. The highest tax impact would be the first year of principal and interest. That we would be looking at $189. And then um, from there it would go down. The 30 years would be down back down to $81. I also want to remind the public that in 2021, Hills Garrison bond will be, be being paid off. 
So for us to continue with that process was probably the best time for the school district as far as tax impact. So since you bring up the Hills Garrison bond, what is that payment roughly on that school? That was actually when we pay off the um, Hills Garrison bond, it's, the impact is 27 cents, so it's about $81. So there'll be an $81 deduction. We also have the um, CTE bond that was voted on last year, and that is about um, 20 cents. As far as additional operating costs, we will not be adding any additional staffing. We will just be looking at part-time custodian and the utilities to run the facility. Once again, this will show you what the um, bond would be. Of course, this is just estimates at this time because we will go out to bid once we are funding the money. Right now, they're estimated the interest rate at 4.5% for 30 years. First year interest would be approximately $650,000. The total bond repayment, similar to your mortgage, would be $40,815. During the deliberative session last Saturday, um, we heard from residents that we did not go out to bid to um, pick the construction management crew. But I just want to remind um, the public that we did go out to bid. That was in June of 2017, maybe a little bit before that. We did advertise. We went out to bid. We had seven vendors respond. Um, the committee, which consisted of the CTE renovation committee, um, looked at, broke it down to four of the best vendors they felt. We and then the four vendors were Harvey Construction, Ekman Construction, Hutta Construction, and PC Construction. Then we... What separated Harvey from the rest, from the others? Was there anything in particular that... I think a lot of it was history, cost. Any other comments? Yeah, their, I, I, uh, their I think experience was working with... Their experience school was working districts. with school districts. Yeah, so they, they had the most school they districts. That's sort of like a specialty in this And their proposed cost for what the project would take? Yeah, the, the, initial, the initial proposal that came back had, um, their initial proposal had a few more months on it than some of the others. Uh -huh. So once you continue the dia dialogue with each of the companies, very specifically, and as you know, the Salem School District, um, their current work in a CT center and renovating an existing high school with the complicated phasing that goes along with it yeah. was a clear draw for us from their perspective, not only in Salem, but certainly other projects as well. I know they do a very good job of, uh, of presenting a workable budget. That's that's pretty true. So yeah, I was just work, wondering. They work hard towards that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. So the committee interviewed um, four of the vendors, and we forwarded the committee as a whole, voted to recommend Harvey Construction to the school board. And then um, at the end of June of 2017, the board did vote to go with Harvey Construction. We do have a bidding and purchasing policy, as you can see, um, 6.1 W, that it was adopted in June of 2004, so we did follow that policy. Um, a little bit of a talk about what a construction manager does. It's a key part of the team from the earliest phase of the project. Is paid a professional fee, which represents a general contractor's profit. Manages a competitive subcontractor bid process so Harvey in turn will send as we move forward every bit of the project it will in turn go out to bid in pieces go ahead I'm sorry no, no it's okay no this is what this is all about have you picked or have you interviewed a, a known as project manager no we have not at this time okay thank you the plan is for us to have a clerk of the works though and it is part of our budget at this point and they are hired to control and guarantee schedule and cost. So we're going to transition. If you have questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, first, I'm going to move closer just for the pointing pieces of certain slides. Uh, this is the overall site development of the project. The project entails the Alvern High School side of the building, which is this gray area. And this new white area represents the addition space. Site development, first and foremost, this is currently being built over current parking. That current parking will be replaced. That current parking replacement is built over a field. We will replace that with a field. Okay? You did hear already around site development some elements of field space and tennis court. 
a lot of the other aspect of that. When we were coming forward with an already escalated cost, 22 million in 2018, 24 million, we simply said escalation costs have risen. If we don't put as many things that need to be done, the odds of us bringing something back a year after or in a separate warrant article give us really no shot at getting those. So that was part of that decision-making process. You're going to see in some of the existing other slides, I'll talk a little more about site development as it was one of the priorities. And just for a point of reference, all of this other white area represents the CT addition, including their new parking spaces, their new building entrance, new culinary arts, greenhouse next to the farm, etc. Anytime you have questions, please stop me. Site development. I'm sorry. No, no. I should have figured. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, I like no it. Tell me to leave anytime you want. No, okay. uh, the CT, um, I'm assuming it's kind of the same type of security board. Is it all going to blend into one security system or is it a separate system? Totally one system. We are absolutely have spec within the context of our CT. We'll break ground in June of 2019. Every element of the new electrical service, the IT service that comes into the CT, certainly all the security pieces will be now under access control of our existing system, the video cameras that we have, the card access, the readers, everything else. Your existing parking lot for student parking and drop-off? Yep. Is, is that going to stay as is or is that going to be tweaked, overlaid or anything? Definitely, definitely needs some tweaking. We currently have multiple issues within the context of the parking from the catch basins that sink over time to a trench that goes through to bring electrical power at one time. So we have some overlays right now in the biggest capacity of design. A lot of it will be functionality. Currently this is all student parking. This is half student parking and faculty parking. Our conversation to date, because we're going to bring buses into our property in a different location than they're currently coming in. Currently buses come in from Rogers Library they circle around the back of the building and drop off. We're going to tweak that to the word that you've used. We're going to bring them in on the farm side of the building. They're going to come in in the access road behind the building. They're going to do a circle and drop off on that new designated sidewalk area. As such, we're going to remove kids from this parking spaces. We're going to put our faculty there, separate kids and buses. That doesn't mean at times our faculty aren't as bad a driver as the kids and vice versa. It just comes with the territory. So we feel as though that plan will certainly get all of our students coming off of a bus to exit on the same side of the bus directly onto a sidewalk. We'll build in a secondary entrance piece for card access for staff to be able to swipe and come in the building. I'm going to keep moving if I may. Um, main entrance, highlighted area with the sidewalk that the superintendent talked about, change the pattern, tweaking the system, going into a one-way system only as you enter the building with all cars exiting the building near the Rogers Library. That intersection is wide enough to accommodate all of that, and many schools through their renovation processes learn from traffic study, how can I improve on the current design? And we believe the improvement in the current design will pay us dividends not only of buses coming in in the back, but also a double lane of cars coming in. Because every day, as the picture indicated, our cars get backed up on 102, we're in gridlock, twice a day at arrival time and dismissal time. Uh, m closer view of the main entry area. Again, you see all of those Homeland Security recommendations that were previously talked about. Blocking, sidewalk with curb, Areas of the building that in good weather kids can come out as they're waiting for rides. Certainly drop off areas for people coming in to find visitor parking, etc. Can you talk a little bit about the uh, architecture yep. matching all aspects of the building? Yep. The, the current architecture at Alvern High School and the other sections have many gable roof ends. So you will see that what was the original main entry area directly in the center of the building. Uh, gable end, big A-frame if you will. We've tried to capture that A-frame or gable view through both the CT new entrance areas for the restaurant and for the school, as well as capture that same essence. So we're trying to tie the architecture built after 1975 in the fire into the CT as it currently was built in 1992 with a renovation of CT with a renovation of Alburn. 
with the double parking lanes, is there another walkway that this left lane is going to be able to drop off, or is one a parking lane? For the most part, the left lane is going to enter into parking spaces. We still have to work those pieces out in terms of we don't want the car coming into the right to not be able to have to just go in the right lane. So we're still working that. That's all part of the civil engineer package. It doesn't necessarily show on the rendering, but good question. Uh, this design, I'm also showing you a secondary entrance. This is what I referenced relative to the buses come around the building and drop. Our current design concept is kids come up the ramp or come up the stairs and enter all through the same door. Here's that secondary entrance that I talked about. We park our staff down below. They swipe and come in through a secured entrance area. What this area also does for us is it gives us a definitive secondary access point that we can close the main building for evening functions. The current gymnasium is this box. So instead of people coming in the main entrance and having to walk through the school, we can close the main entrance close all of the efficiencies of the electricity, of the heating system, obviously through setbacks, bring everybody directly into a lobby, directly into the gym. We believe that's a much more efficient system. This, exit, uh, this entrance area is also on grade. For those who know the property, who've been to an event in the stadium, you currently, it's not on grade, you have to come upstairs to go to the bathroom. Concession stand is a shed down near the tennis courts. This corner of the building is a two-way concession stand. Concession for outside through window, concession inside for gym activities. Be open for both events for a football game, for example. Our restroom facilities, brand new in the back area, come right through the entrance area for a game. You're totally on grade. You go directly to those bathroom areas. Much more ADA compliant than our existing system. Uh, the new system, the current gymnasium, gets converted to be an auditorium. This auditorium design is the same design that we spent lots of time talking about last year. You take the current gym, you've got every element of the old, you create a corner, kitty corner if you will, stage area with green room space for performances, whether it be music or theater. You have three tiers of seating. You have floor seating, you have mezzanine seating built up and tiered, and you also, in those who know the facility, our existing weight loft area and the upper area of our stage become balcony seating as it wraps around that gymnasium. Seating for 680 people, full control booth to take care of lights, sound, full acoustical panels, not only on the walls, but the appropriate seats that will absorb sound, as well as panels on the ceiling. Yep, the entrance area to the auditorium is done through a light, a light lock. So the, the area, the accessories around it, brand new elevator, which is a combination of freight and passenger elevator. The biggest set we create to the largest piece of musical equipment that's in our room, the marimba. Currently, we have to take that outside the building to bring it to the gym because we cannot fit it in an elevator. The new freight elevator will accommodate that piece of equipment and any site design as well. But light lock, you're running a few minutes late from the bathroom to the project. You come in, you don't disturb. It has new bathroom areas connected to it. We don't want to have people moving through every element of the building. We want it segmented into sections. The process on the first floor has a new gymnasium. From a standpoint, the gymnasium is by far our most used facility in our building. To have it on the second floor currently creates some ADA issues, even though it has an elevator accessible. The biggest difference is, this is referred to in most terms as a double gym. It allows you to have a full practice for a team at the same time a second full practice is occurring. Currently, and today's a good example, our last practice of the night ends at 9.15 p.m. Someone gets the lucky end of the early one, someone gets the unlucky end of the late one. We rotate that around, but it's far from ideal. The biggest difference is because we have an auditorium on top of this, we don't compete. It's the same kids, they're all of value, they're all Alvern High School students. We do not have to compete. Next Monday night, a week from now, we have a music concert in the gym, we look forward to it. We have to take all of our teams rent them space outside our building to find a place to have a gym. We have to transport them on a school bus that we pay for to get them there. 
that should not be the case, but we should be able to get music to be able to have a concert, and vice versa. When we have a concert, we have no physical education classes in the winter because we can't go outside, okay, unless it's a snowshoeing activity. This gym, as the superintendent alluded to, is fully electronic. That means the bleachers, you push a button and they open and close. The baskets go up and down with a button. You have more natural light. You have the capacity on grade. If you came into the building, on one end of the gym, you come in at the top of the bleachers and you walk to the bottom. On the other side, because of the grade change in the building, you come in the door, you're at the bottom, and you climb up the bleachers. In that rendering there, yep. can you see where that double-sided snack shack is, or is that not here? Yeah, uh, it's on the outside. It's not. Th this actual is this particular rendering would actually rotate. The bleacher pieces will be on those at that outside wall. So if I went back into the concession building, the same door you come in, you would go outside. All your bathrooms are right there, and your concession stand is in the corner. So it's really, again, that one-stop shopping. We close the rest of this building. Certainly we have it open for an emergency egress if something happened, but our whole main corridor and every other area of the building, we don't have to mix and match. Okay. This is the floor plan, and I'll talk briefly, but I'm going to move myself around the building. Priority one, safe and secure entry area, main entry. Priority two, special education, counseling, main office in the area and vicinity of the main entrance. Here's our main office area, school resource officer, conference principal, reception. Here's our special education space. Here is our counseling space. It's all connected. Our current busiest offices in the building are our counseling and our special ed offices. No question about it. The most visitors from the outside. You come in you now have one contiguous hallway all the way for sight lines through the building. No more big hallway that stops with a big cafeteria as you currently know it, and then you have to get through that cafeteria to go somewhere else. The design has the new gym. Here's the new gym I talked about. Bleachers on this side of the gym, 1,200 seats, same seating capacity as we have now. Bleachers on this side, you enter at the top of the bleachers, you climb your way down because of the grade change. Back of the bleachers, here's your concession stand that you asked about. Here is your after hours entrance for that gym. You go into the gym, you go into the bleachers. Here's bathrooms that are handicap accessible. Down a quick set of stairs are the big large bathrooms for everyone else who needs them. All of this functionality is accessible for the stadium field right behind it. You keep moving after the gym. Our existing building, although you may not be able to see this from home or even here, this red line is our existing building. You're taking the existing cafeteria and you're transforming it, a big part of it, into locker rooms in the fitness area, the weight loft, because you're taking that out of something else, you have to replace it. You are taking the checkers kitchen area in the CTR restaurant kitchen and you're converting it to the cafeteria kitchen repurposing the infrastructure that's already in the room. Our current restaurant turns into the serving area for our kids for lunch. Our kids come out of that, they go into a cafeteria, which is now a room, not a hallway. We have a secondary cafeteria. The best thing we ever did was move the herd to two spaces. It just creates a much better environment for them and for us. So again, separate room. Why I point out separate rooms is because priority number five, increase community use of the school. It's already a busy place here, but when you can close off a room and put an adult education class, yoga, into a space, or let the Girl Scouts and the Brownies come in for a space, and they don't have to feel like everybody's walking through them, that makes all the difference in the world. That, in essence, is the addition of Alvern High School the renovation on the first floor. The second floor, it's all auditorium and bathroom and elevator based. Here's the kitty corner stage in the gym box. Here's the floor seating, the mezzanine seating, all the way up on the top deck, the balcony seating. We have bathrooms both at the top floor for an event. We have new restroom facilities, the new freight elevator. 
with plenty of storage. The biggest thing our performing art people said is, can we do something to put storage into spaces? So we've really tried to accommodate that. Still with the block, for those of you who know the building, the math hallway that comes off the back of that front end of that part. That's again the upper floor. Where's your scene and paint shop in relation to this? Great question. Current girls locker room becomes the scene and paint shop. How is that um, accessible to the stage? Directly through up the ramp and onto the stage. So if you were in the girls locker room, we currently have a stairwell in the back corner of the gym. You have all of the water and functionality of the drains that's already in that girl's locker room. Turns into the scene and paint shop. We come out through double access door, double access door. We can go up the ramp or we can pass the stuff directly onto the stage. Currently, say... So is that equal level or is there... I know that's the same exact level. Yep. Same exact level as the main part of the stage. The difference is that weight loft area becomes the balcony. Sure. You have a background in theater is my prediction, okay? Yep, I can tell. And again, we welcome the opportunity to consult because we have spent an enormous amount of time engaging our theater people, our music people. What they like most about this design, very upfront, our theater people like the shows based on audience smaller. We keep the balcony closed, we open the floor in the mezzanine. It's one-stop shopping much doesn't feel like you're performing to a full house, but it feels fuller when it's smaller. We have big music here. Music wanted bigger. We, we have the balcony open for them, still with the access. We think, at least from the perspective of our staff, we've got the best of both worlds in that design. And what's under the stage? What's that on top of? Uh, that's built currently on the existing deck of that current gym floor. So this is a raised up um, decking piece built for the stage. It doesn't it's sink. Storage under the stage. Correct. We, we basically, storage under the stage immediately creates a fire safety issues with some sprinkler issues and then if you had an orchestra pit you have to make it compliant. We chose not to go in with the orchestra pit for that reason. We can certainly talk more about that. I appreciate your intellect and your experience with it. Uh, points to consider, these were really already talked about. There's no question enhancement of school safety is going back to the number one priority. Certainly we have some parking lot upgrades. I liked your word about tweaking pieces because it takes care of some of the potholes, it takes care of some of the other pieces. It utilizes some space hopefully in better ways. Current Good curb appeal too. Say again? Good curb appeal. There's no question. What it looks like outside, you're going to expect inside. Yep. Right. And why save the surprise till you get in? Yeah, good, good point. point. Corrects building electrical, mechanical. This project has all new boilers for Alvern High School, as well as new hot water system. Obviously, the new spaces, the gymnasium gets dehumidification. The um, auditorium gets air conditioning. The main office areas get air conditioning because we have to run in the summertime. Uh, the building through the CT has brand new electrical service as well as a generator. The building has never had a generator here. Your, uh, your boiler system, um, is it double what your current one is? Currently we already have a double on Alvar inside. And so you got double. redundancy? Correct, we already have that. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, no question that we improve the community access of the gymnasium. Our goal with community access is to try to see Hudson Recreation getting into our property in the wintertime, okay, as a viable entity. Additionally, no question, music and theater students have a place to call their own, as well as the community. It fills into number four and five. Further construction cost increases, this is the kicking the can down the road. We estimated it at five, a year ago it came in at 7.4. We can't tell you what it's going to come in for the next one, but I don't think five's enough. Increases home values as a community member here. That's my motivation beyond that's the, I'm the principal of the school. We'll pay more. No one likes to pay more, but our house will be worth more. So I see it as an investment into that. Finally, construction phasing. By far the most complicated process of any element of design. You want to do something, but one of our bidders said, well, we can just close school for the year and we can get this built really quickly. Uh, we chose not to interview that particular firm because the kids wouldn't, well, some of the kids might appreciate that, but no one else would. So we start 
on the Alvern High School side with site number one. The big addition starts very quickly thereafter in June, July, August. We're starting it. It's basically going to take 11 months from our construction manager's process. From there, we move into the locker room space with some summer activity. The last piece we can do is the big auditorium because I have to get everything out from under it first, which coincides with moving them to the CT area so we can drop steel through the floor to hold up those tiered seating. Um, I know there's a little bit of stuff that has come through some of these slides. We're confident that this construction schedule is about 28 months in total. We're continuing to refine the elements of it. When you look at the backdrop of the next slide, which is the combined Alvern and CT, there is no question we have simultaneous things happening here on two different sides of the building to the point you earlier made about a clerk of the works for the owner's person. Um, what do you anticipate your staging area to be for materials and... Yeah, good question. So the staging and materials, the first element that we're giving to Harvey is all of this back area behind the tennis court, as well as we are land rich here with the farm. So we have the ability to, without it being a long uh, haul away, we have loads of property on the other side of the barn for additional pieces. But our initial phasing piece from a trailer and construction and material piece with construction vehicles coming in, parking at the farm. So the workers come in and park at the farm, they walk up to the project, the storage materials are right on the property next to where we're building. Why you still have that? Uh, I want to bounce back to the field that you want to do. Yep. You're going to have to cross over a track that was recently done a few years back. Correct. Uh, is there a, a process to protect that? Yep, there are two, two, two pieces from what our construction manager has talked to us about. We have two different options. One is a build up and over process. Uh -huh. The other one is to natural protections with multiple pieces down as we cross in. We knew that going in. The issue going back to X amount of years ago, we couldn't have track meets here. Again, Hudson has been a frugal community forever, okay? we felt like we have to get something done on the track because we can't have a track meet here. We got the track. If we were to add in the cost of the field of the time, we significantly doubted that we would it. And there's history. We had a petition warrant article in time in town to do the track and the field all at one time. It got less than 50% of the vote. We came back the next year and said, are we going to go both out of it again? We chose not to. We said, what's the bigger priority? It was the track, because our track kids, we were busting them all over the place, because we couldn't even practice on it. We got the track done. We asked the same question at the time. If we end up doing the field, how do we do the field? We have processes in place to address without doing any damage to the existing infrastructure that we paid for. Yes, the, the, the initial plan of what is currently in this budget is to replace a significant crown it's the biggest crown you'll ever see on a field, okay? Fix some sinkholes that have been generated over time and then resod the field. Uh, tennis court replacement, we have a bit of a natural spring that runs underneath those. Well, natural springs and hard surfaces don't usually work well together. So it is not uncommon for us in tennis world that even though we have five courts, we only can play on three and then we bounce back and forth, so that's part of that process as well. Um, again, from a phasing perspective, to stay on that target, if we do projects simultaneously, it helps us with the overall cost piece, okay? That's our goal, okay? It doesn't mean that every single division happens, but for the most part, the big addition for the CT is happening almost at the same time as the big addition if the Alvern passes. Do you think you'll have any money left over to uh, pretty up the front of the existing building? What would you recommend us do? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just didn't know if there was no, a... I, I, we certainly, every project has a contingency connected to it, okay? There is no question that our prudent decision-making, hiring a construction manager that has been check and balance with our architect through the entirety of the process beyond escalation costs should provide us some pieces. For many who went to school here and have lived here for a long time, they want us to protect the architecture of a New England brick and white trim 
over anything. We have tried to do that. If you saw the front of the building, it's all New England brick. If you come to the CT side, the front portions are all New England brick. If you go behind the new addition in the CT, we've changed materials. We did it to be prudent because being prudent pays us some dividends. The back part of the new gym area might be a different product for the same reason. You will see it from the stadium field, but you're certainly not going to drive by to your point. The curb appeal shows you something as you're trying to maybe buy into a community or what you can anticipate as you're walking in. Where will the um, field and tennis courts be in part of those phases? Uh, the, 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 uh, but I, I don't have that definitively done yet, simply because our priority areas, we have to play this off of a schedule because you're also, you're not going to put down new sod and let someone go instantaneously on it. So our concept is let's get this field done immediately after the fall season. Let it stay, get embedded. Schedule your spring activities, possibly late spring on it, but so you're going to see how it does. You're going to see what kind of winter you have. The tennis court piece, it is no question that this is going to be a summer process like the track was going to be. We have a tr tennis season that ends at the end of May. Instantaneously, you're going to go. We had a track season. Well, we didn't have a track season. We've sent them out. We did that track in the course of a summertime, so the next fall it was ready for the community and for our kids eventually. Uh, the last slide is just a reminder of voting day. No question, March 12th at the Community Center from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., uh, as has typically been the case. If there's any other questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Um, the question, uh, if it wasn't picked up, is as, was there any consideration for a synthetic turf field? So the synthetic turf field has a delta. It's technically between seven and 800,000. There would be, that's on top of what would be that 200,000-ish. The good thing for us, even though it is raised with a concern, we don't have to do the track at the same time. We would have to do underside drainage as part of the turf. The turf has a life expectancy. Obviously, it's not going to get used that quickly, but over time. Um, the city of Nashua's turf at Stelos is terrific. I came here from being the principal at Laconia High School that put in a turf field there. We can never say never, but we'd love to see someone come in forward and want to have the field named after them because that would help us. <laughs> and if I win the lottery, it would be probably named after my family. My second question, again, totally unrelated to the field, is um, will you allow your construction CTE students to work on this project at any point? Yep, good, great question. So far, I'll give you a couple of examples of what they've done so far. We haven't done much because of the due diligence. We have done some uh, site development pieces. We have had to do test borings. That was an interesting day of drilling for a rigger to come in here. We put our building trade students out in that area. We put our heavy equipment students out because the m machine that they're running is a big diesel engine that drills holes deep into the ground. They like that piece. Every element, and you can talk about this from a Salem perspective, any time you have done a renovation project, including your school, it's not just your CT students. Uh, there are elements of surveying that happens in geometry, that geometry kids going out when they lay out a foundation is an interesting life lesson. There is certainly an interest as things develop over time in getting information. As we start renovating an auditorium, there is no question we're going to have some kids chomping at the bit to go see the development stages of that. So both our architect, Lavallee Brenzinger, and our construction manager, Harvey, have solid experience engaging kids into the process, not just from touring, but you plant the seed through touring, and then you invest. No question in the foundation design, in the steel development sign we're going to have kids who are in building trades and engineering engage with the process. Any other questions I could answer or anyone else could? Any significant changes from last year's plan beyond the field and tennis court? Now, the, the major differences from last year on this side of the plan, last year the locker rooms were on the side coming into the gym. No question in the past year with further study Homeland Security recommendations, we are told very directly, you need to put your offices there. It's great to have a locker room, but you can't put the locker room there. You need to get 
when we did our study, we did a study over the year of how many visits from outside our building came to the special ed office and the counseling office and the main office. The main office has very little. We can also go to them and sometimes meet. Those two other offices, the college process, college visitors, parents coming in with kids, the normal special education process, by far the busiest offices. We made a concrete decision to put those offices right there. That's the biggest change. One of the comments that we did in our tour earlier, and certainly anyone's welcome to stay if you want to see something, we have been renovating Alvern High School over the last seven years somewhat feverishly. It makes for a very busy summer times, but we're able to renovate space for a fraction of the cost if we turned it over. The inefficiency of that is it takes us longer to do it. After this summer, summer 219, we'll have approximately 22 spaces remaining to renovate. We are averaging doing between six to 10 a year. Sometimes they're eight, sometimes they're 10, but we have 22 spaces and it just doesn't automatically mean we'll get all of those done in the next two years. Uh, a renovated classroom is from the ground level up. Flooring, paint, lights, electrical, and I think the biggest misnomer that some people have is why is your project not doing everything to all of your instructional areas at Alvern? And the best examples I use are Salem High School, Dover High School, Alvern High School. Salem High School uh, is a full renovation. Everything from their CT area to their classroom areas and it's $75 million combined. And it's beautiful. Dover High School same CT renovation, high school renovation, comes in at $85 million. If you combine what the community has agreed to for the CT, $25.25 million, with the $24 million asking cost for this year's vote, you're at just under $50 million. If we took another $25 million or $25 to $35 million, we would get the entirety of Alvern High School done. But right now we have 20 rooms to do. We're taking care of the big infrastructure areas of electrical, of boilers, of hot water, it's mechanical pieces through the renovation process. And we're going to keep moving up, trying to renovate six to ten spaces a year. What will happen to the office space that you no longer need, like the counseling spaces and the main office? Yep, both, both areas, the main office, which is in directly in the front of the building here, as well as the counseling office there, are scheduled to become special education space. Mm -hmm. As part of the CT renovation, we're taking the special education office area out and moving it. We have two classroom areas in our life skills area. We're moving the life skills area front and center directly into the middle of the building. Life skill area has a classroom space. It has a kitchen space perfectly situated. Our therapy space, our speech, our OT, our PT all come directly front and center for the population of students. Last one before we ship you back to Salem. I, got, I just have two recommendations, or two things. Please do. Uh, and it's just things that we found doing Salem. You, uh, I noticed you have the large windows on your gym. Uh, we ended up putting a film over the ones facing the east. If, if you haven't thought of it, you probably have. The Valley will because they learned with us. Yep. And any type of wood panels you have in your auditorium uh, in open areas, uh, just be careful when they're going up because we found that some of them cup. After a while, the humidity uh, played havoc with them, yep. and we got them straightened out, but it took a little while. Both great points. Our current design, we've decided to block windows on this side of the building because it's directly at the exposure. If you came to a game at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you can't see the field. Oh. So we've knocked that out already. We have kept some natural light on this side of the building because the sun has already moved by that time of day. And this side of the building, we have very small pieces just to get some other light to balance off the side so we don't create shadows through the, through the course. Uh, we do have some wood paneling. We're having a discussion about wood paneling. We did an interior design study with kids. Going to your question, it was a great experience. We brought um, freshmen into a room auditorium and showed them multiple designs. We showed seniors the same designs and then we did our faculty in a two-day period. 
very interesting differences of the current thinking in terms of what a design should look like. What our kids want, both freshmen and seniors, we want to celebrate the agricultural aspect of a tree farm, big open field space. We want it to feel, uh, they use the words, I, I would kind of assume it now, like a Sierra trading post. They like some wood feel. They like the feel of openness of glass. Currently, there is a discussion about putting a wood ceiling in the restaurant because it's tied directly to the farm as an anchor activity. Again, with new parking, come into the restaurant and see that piece first and foremost. Instead of a traditional metal deck, acoustical ceiling tiles, even though these ones are nice because they get painted up with kids. So that's both, both of those pieces are great feedback. And as we've met each other tonight, I hope that you can make some other recommendations as we continue. Our first avenue is answer questions, get people to the polls, and see what the vote ends up being. 60% is a hard number in this town, sadly. But that's where we're at. So I thank you all for coming, HCTV. I know we all speak together in our appreciation for all that you continue to do for us. If anybody would like to stay and see an area that has been renovated, because I'm not sure I have met you before, but I'm intrigued to, uh, we would love to show you that. Thanks for coming. You're now in a renovated chemistry lab. This chemistry lab was uh, provided, the funding for this was provided by the Alvern trustees. Many of our other science labs have been renovated both by the trustees and or community money. Biggest differences in the changes. First, we've moved to stand up lab experiences just like a college lab would have. We don't have kids sitting. We have found kids standing doing chemistry labs specifically with gas, with water, with electricity. Standing up, we have less safety issues and we're thankful for our teachers for their proactive safety measures. We have in the back of the room appropriate storage, drying racks, storage for materials, all brand new casework. When we renovated this room three years ago, all new flooring, wall coverings, new paint, new ceiling, new lights, new disco ball. We kept the original windows. We put in a new portable venting system so a teacher can do a chemistry lab in front of kids as a demo that kids can circle around and see everything that they're about to experience. No more chalkboards when we renovate a space. We move to whiteboards, smart projection. We can put a YouTube video on the computer, project it for all the kids to see. We have found the efficiency of lab tables. All rooms are ADA compliant. You have a lower table, you have a lower sink to meet ADA requirements. So renovated spaces, uh, we are left currently, we have about 22 after this summer, summer of 2019, we'll have about 22 spaces remaining to renovate. So for community members who think that Alvarin needs to do more on the instructional side of the building through renovation, while we agree, our process has been very efficient and very cost effective averaging somewhere between six and ten spaces per year, mostly done in the summertime. Thank you. We're back. Currently we're in a social studies classroom at Alvern. This is a room that is scheduled for renovation in the summer of 2019. In fact, we're going to be painting this room over the upcoming February vacation. This room is original from 1975. The floor tile that you see was probably the color of what many things were in 1975. The, while the wall coverings have been painted, much of the furniture in this room is original. The bookcase in the back of the corner, orange. The teacher desk, that thing has been here as long as the teacher has been here. Much of the furniture in this room, while student furniture can change, the learning experience in this room, still with a vibrant teacher, is very different than a renovated space. The biggest differences that I bring to your attention are the ceiling and the lights. Every space that hasn't been renovated, it has a darker tone to it than a bright learning environment. This classroom has chalkboards that have been covered with either smart technology or whiteboards. In the new spaces when we renovate them, we no longer have chalkboards. Everything is a whiteboard or a projection system. The lights all hang down in the current design. It's a compact fluorescent light bulb 
that is energy efficient, but it's hanging below the roof grid, which causes a shadow perspective. In a renovated room, our ceiling tiles get replaced and we put LED lighting and you'll see a significant difference in the next room we go to. Now you're across the hall from the previous room in a renovated space. We're so pleased that this room was renovated with the sweat equity of a local Boy Scout as part of his Eagle Scout project. The school district took part of replacing the floor, replacing the ceiling and the lights, all LED fixtures. The Eagle project involved scraping, demoing the old parts of the room, taking chalkboards down, painting all of the windows, the heating units, the doors and the walls. No longer has a chalkboard in it. During a normal classroom day with natural light filtering in through the five windows, this is a very bright and energetic learning space. We look forward to having all of the classrooms in our building renovated over the course of the next four years. We're in the gymatorium. It's uh, just after 8.15 at night. And we, as you can see behind me, have an ongoing varsity basketball practice. The practice tonight goes until about 9.15 p.m. As typical as the case here, this gym allows one team to practice at a time. As you can see panning around me, you see the weight loft area where our fitness kids do their piece. You have the stage area as connected to the gym with a stage curtain. And we have lots of competition currently between our performing arts students of theater, of music, and our athletes in our phys ed classes. The wood bleachers that you see on both sides of the gym are in need of repair. They're mechanical driven, meaning we use a piece of equipment to pull them out. An updated gymnasium would allow us to push a button and the bleachers would move with us. The wood floor, while it looks nice at a distance, this wood floor has multiple areas that have been redone. Any time we have water damage, you will see areas of the floor that have different species of wood in them. Because any time we have a spill of water, whether it's on the side court or in the middle of the court, we consistently have issues with the wood popping because we can no longer sand this floor down. It is too thin through too many years of sanding and varnishing. So now all we do to recoat it is we scrub it, again putting water down on it as part of that process, and then we refinish it with a polyurethane based. Far from ideal. Finally, the baskets that you see. You see two baskets that are up in the air. You see our game baskets that are down for this practice. All of that is done with a drill with custodial staff. In a new gymnasium, you push a button and that happens. The new gym, referred to as a double gym, would allow us to have two teams practice at one time with a curtain that drops between them. Currently, we cannot do that because the width of our gymnasium is not big enough to have a full team practice. As this room gets converted into an auditorium, in the back corner of the, auditorium, of the gym where I'm standing, this would all be a new stage area. The stage area would include a green space for kids who are getting ready to go on the stage. It would have ample storage, and it would have three tiers of seating. Floor seating, mezzanine seating that's built up off the floor, as well as balcony seating in the upper L elements of the room, currently the weight loft and the upper stage area. We're excited to bring forward a renovation project that would have 680 auditorium seats for school community use, evening theater, evening community and shows to benefit our Hudson residents. Thanks for coming on the tour tonight of this in the gym.